Hi, I'm Kyle Hayden, otherwise known as Kyle Cringe, otherwise known as the Forging Dork, and today I would like to be showing you how to change this into this. Alright, so for this build, you're literally only going to need a lighter, um, but you can't just use any lighter. You have to use a very special type of lighter. The lighter that I'm using is just called Best Choice. Let's see if you can see that logo there. It's called Best Choice. I was actually walking out of Hy-V or Price Chopper or something like that. I was walking out of that place earlier and I saw this on the, on the wall and I was like, hey, that's the thing that I need. That's the exact type of lighter that I need for this build. As you can see, it's just a normal lighter. Uh, it's got one of those rings that you can like adjust the size, although I find that if you with this particular brand, if you put the ring all the way to the left, it won't light at all. It'll just spark, which is not such a bad thing because we don't really need the inhibitor ring at all, and we don't really need it to um, spark, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Uh, some of you probably already know what I'm hinting at. Yes, you are going to need an existing flame to use this flamethrower mod, which I know sucks. I just can't, for the life of me, figure out how to get a spark hot enough that it can ignite the amount of butane that's rushing out of this thing after it's fired. So, you're just going to have to man up, carry two lighters or something. I don't know, get a Zippo, something that's quality, but... For this, the best choice lighter is what I've found to be the easiest to work with as well as cheap. It's it's really cheap. So without further ado, let's just let's get into the build. Alright, so the first thing that you're wanna get uh, that you're gonna wanna do is take off this casing. I know it looks plastic, but it's actually aluminum of some sort. I'm gonna take just some ordinary needle nose pliers and pull that off, like so. This is pretty easy. And I'm gonna leave that right there in a pile of stuff that we aren't gonna come back to because we don't need. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off the spark wheel. And the spark wheel is what actually makes the lighter light. If you look really closely, underneath the spark wheel, underneath the spark wheel, there's a tiny little stick of flint that runs against a file, and that is what actually ignites the flame. That only works when a small amount of gas is running out, and a small amount of gas is not what we want. So we're going to just take off the spark wheel all together because it's not going to serve a function otherwise and it's just going to get in the way of the uh, in the way of refilling this once we empty it I am however going to keep the little flint stick which looks just like that I'm going to keep that along with the spring because you can use them for something different which is pretty fun uh, most of you probably know what I'm talking about, but I'll show you guys all that later. Then, you want to just continue disassembling. So I'm going to pop this bit off. Like so. I'm going to put it in a pile of things that we are going to come back to because we are going to need that later. Next, we want to pop off the inhibitor ring and just toss that out because it's not going to serve a purpose. And then, we need to figure out a way to get off this black frame. So what I'm going to be doing for that is I'm just going to take a kitchen knife and I'm going to try to pry it off. Alright, well I'm not sure if you saw that but it just flew off and I'm going to go get that because we are going to need to return to it and use it again. So I'm just going to put that in the pile of stuff that we are going to be returning to. Alrighty, so now you should have something that looks a bit like this if you're using the same brand that I am. Other brands will have something similar to this. It won't look exactly the, uh, like Bic lighters do not work at all. Do not use a Bic lighter. The only things that I found are these 
best choice lighters and some other type of lighter that I can't, I think it's off brand, I don't know the name of it. But basically anything clear that you can see a tube in is going to be what you want. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the top off of this, like so. Once you start, you should hear a little hissing sound, which is, there it is. See if you can hear that. Don't be concerned about that. It's, it's normal. And then once you get it almost all the way off, expect a bit of a jack-in-the-box reaction. Mm. Alright, well, it's not wanting to shoot out, but sometimes the, sometimes the tube that we're taking out of this will shoot out at you, which is kind of scary. You don't really want it to shoot out at you, but squirt it out. That's what the tube is going to look like once it's out. You don't really need to keep it, so you don't have to pick it up if you don't care about your garage being clean. Um, my parents would get on me if I didn't clean up, so I, I had to pick it up. The fuel that was in here basically hit the floor and evaporated instantly, so there's not much of a cleanup job there either. But, alright, now we can get back into assembling it. You want to take the last piece that you put off, the thing that you just screwed on, take out the tube and screw that back on there as tight as you can get it. I'm just going to use my fingers for this. And there you go. It's tight, tight back on there. And then just assemble it in the order that you took it apart. Alright, now once you have it looking like this again, you're basically done. If you wanted to add the spark ring to it again, just so it looks a little bit more inconspicuous, you can. I would not suggest wrestling with the stick anymore, because they're, they're going to do diddly squat to this, and they're not really visible anyway. So I am going to fix this up so that it looks a little bit less inconspicuous, but I'm still going to leave this off of it because now what we need to do is we need to fill it up with butane. Alright, so what I've been using for my flamethrowers is this Coleman butane stuff. It was pretty cheap. This bottle of it, which has gotten me several, um, probably up in the 50s of refills only so far, has... Um, it hasn't run out. It's gotten me about 50 refills so far, and it cost just about two dollars, I think. Of course, it was at Walmart. It wasn't. It wasn't on sale though. So two dollars, I think, is a pretty good price for this much butane. What you're gonna want to do is take your lighter. You see this little nub here, the silver nub. You want to fit the butane over that nub. Pull up on this trigger here and then just press up and down with the butane bottle. Don't worry if you get some on your hands. It's going to be a little cold but overall it's not going to harm you severely unless you shoot like a whole bunch on there. So don't do that. If you feel it cold and you feel it touching your skin, just move it away. Alright, so now that's that's basically all it is. You see the, those three little squirts and it's basically completely full. Now since this is compressed with Freon, and the Freon is uh, heavier than the, than the actual fuel, holding it upright and shooting it, it doesn't get you a whole lot of action. So if you want, if you really want to use it, you have to hold it sideways or upside down. And like I said, the spark wheel will not catch this stream of fuel, no matter how hard you try. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry around two lighters. This will be my fuel source, and that will be my attack. So that's basically the entirety of this build. 
It was pretty short, but some of you were asking how I made the flamethrower that I featured in my little 13 second video a couple days ago. So, like I said, you just hold out your lighter and shoot. And that's about it. Pretty simple build, pretty cheap build, pretty impressive build. I'll see you guys later. Um, bye.